Okay, welcome everyone. Today's topic is the art of mastering um, MLS searching. How do you still find great deals in the MLS? Um, is that still possible? And if so, how? So let's dive into it. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. If you um, need to raise your hand, just unmute yourself or send them a question via the chat. Okay, friends. So here we go. We have uh, in front of us MLS. Okay. So I got very excited when I had access to the MLS just to find out that I found myself in the, in the middle of the ocean, literally. So when you do a search in the MLS, it was just very difficult to identify whether uh, we're looking at, at a great deal or we're just looking at something that doesn't make sense, okay? Just for sakes, um, I'm gonna pick an area. I'm gonna pick all zip, for instance. Single family homes in all zip on their uh, 200,000, okay? So now view results. At this point, um, so I can just go through a lot of listings. So for instance, well, this is 10. 10. So it's off the market, this is active. And this is listed for 79,000. I'm gonna go to the next one. This is listed for 84,000. Um, and then I'm gonna go to the next one. So this is listed for 89,000, okay? So when you look at the MLS, it is very hard to know whether the property is a great deal because some of the key pieces of information that you need to look at is uh, obviously price and then uh, how long it's been on the market. And in this case, this property is contingent, but we're gonna do a little bit more research on this property. So when you scroll down, you're gonna see, uh, for those of you who have access to the MLS, a lot of information about the property. But if you don't have access to the, to the MLS, don't worry. We're gonna give you access to the MLS through Chicago Deal Board. Okay, so you're gonna be able to search the MLS as if you were a broker. It is that simple. So as you can see, there's a lot of details on the property, but how do you know this is a great deal? So for instance, this property has been on the market for 27 days. It got listed for 89,000. So let's quickly look at the pictures, okay? And see the condition of it. So it's siding, uh, it seems like it needs quite a lot of work, okay? All Zip, by the way, is a great rental uh, market. So at this point, you don't have enough information whether this is a, a great deal, because to be able to find out if this is a great deal, you need to know three things. First of all, um, listing price or asking price is irrelevant, okay? You need to know what is the after repair value, how much can I sell the property for if I make all the repairs and make it look very nice, okay? So that is number one. Second of all is, how much am I gonna spend on the rehab, okay? That is gonna be very critical. And third, how much should I pay for the property, right? And that is gonna be driven after your exit strategy. Okay, so depending on whether you do a wholesale, a flip, or a rental, that's going to drive your max allowed offer price. Okay, that's going to be so critical. So that was one of the issues that I had with the MLS. Like, I look at this property. Okay, so it says 89, but how much am I going to spend in rehab? What's the ARV on the property? How much should I pay for the property, right? If I get it on the contract, how much should I, you know, offer? And that's one of the biggest mistakes that people make when purchasing real estate, they don't even know how much to pay for the property. Therefore, guess what? They tend to overpay for the properties. Um, because in real estate, you're gonna be making money not when you rehab the property or flip the property or rent the property, no. You are going to be making money in real estate when you buy the property. You heard me right. The minute you close on the property, you are going to need 
to make money, at least 10% as is value. What it means is, if we were to do an appraisal on this property, if it appraised, let's say for, um, let's say 100,000, we should buy this property for no more than 90,000. Does that make sense? So you need to come in with at least 10% equity. Um, so we've solved this problem of not knowing the unknown by giving you all the numbers that you need to know to analyze a property. So I'm gonna do exactly the same search in Chicago Devo, okay? Um, so in this case, I'm going to cap the purchase price 200,000 and then uh, active listings, find deals in all seat, okay? And we're gonna be looking for the same property that I was just showing you. So the, the address is 11839, okay? So let's go back to deal vault. Okay, that's not it, did I skip it? And 33, oh, okay, so the thing is that this property that we were looking at is contingent. Uh, so I'm gonna look for one that is active. This is another one contingent because when they're contingent, that means that you cannot make an offer because it's already in the contract. So this is the next property that is active. So this is for sale for uh, 133, it's been on the market for 84 days. Uh, let's quickly take a look at the pictures to see if it makes sense. Because remember, uh, when you buy a property, you need to look for properties that need a light to medium rehab. In this case, this property uh, needs obviously some updating. And this property qualifies for a light to medium rehab. So what do we, we mean by that? We mean that we need to update um, the flooring, paint the entire house, update the kitchen, appliances, and also the, the bathrooms, okay? Perhaps changing some of the live fixtures, uh, some doors. I'm gonna tell you what we are not doing. So we're not doing anything to the foundation. We're not replacing all the windows. We're not doing a new roof. Uh, we're not redoing the electric system or the plumbing system, okay? We just want to do a light to medium rehab. So the question is, is this a good deal? It's listed for 133. And if so, how much should I spend for the rehab? And based on those factors, how much should I make an offer for, right? So it's all very hard, uh, but worry no more, friends. So here's the property, this uh, same property, three bedroom, uh, one and a half bath. And we're just gonna give you the numbers that you need to um, <clears throat> understand. So here, we're gonna give you the ARV. So the ARV could potentially be very close to the asking price, okay? So based on that, and then some of the rehab, we're gonna give you a rehab estimate that's gonna be driven based on the area and the square footage. So a property that is a three bedroom, one and a half bath, 1,100 square feet, almost 1,200 in all seat, the rehab will be, assuming that it's light to medium, between 20 to 30,000. So based on all these factors, guess what? The most you should offer for this property for a flip 75, for a rental 89, so it is way below the asking price. Now, you might wonder, how do you compute the after repair value? So let's just quickly go over that. So this is a three bedroom, one bath. All you need to do is scroll down to the comp section and we're gonna click on search. So what we're doing is we're putting all the properties that sold in the last six months um, within a one mile radius. And so these are three bedroom, one bath in all seat, okay? So one sold for 166, the other one sold for 167. So let's quickly take a look at these comps. The condition is that these properties uh, need to be purchased in the last uh, six months, okay? So let's quickly look at the pictures. This house, looks okay so it's been updated but uh, it's got the vintage look okay but it's it's in very nice condition so and it's got a swimming pool <laughs> i believe 
Okay, so let's look at the other one because we wanna make sure that we're comparing apples with apples. So when you look at comps, the comps need to be properties that have been rehabbed, okay? Because you need to know what the after repair value of the property. So this is a property that has been rehabbed, okay? So they've done the painting, the flooring, um, the kitchen. So this looks, you know, the bathroom, it's totally rehabbed. So this is ready to move in. So this property only lasted four days in the market. It listed for 167 and then it sold for that much back in September, okay, last year. Um, so when we look at these two comps, and then let's go back to the subject property, we are going to be able to reassess the ARV. So our ARV now is going to be about 166,000 for this property. Uh, but still, this property, the subject property needs, I would say, 25,000 in rehab because we need to touch pretty much everything. Flooring, kitchen, bathroom, um, and that's with the assumption we're not doing any of the major systems, uh, including uh, HVAC, okay? So that is very, very important uh, because otherwise that's gonna throw your numbers. Okay, can, can everyone hear me okay? I see that there are some comments on the volume. Let me increase the volume. We'll make sure that you all can hear okay. Um, perfect, okay, thank you for the feedback. Okay, so let's go back to these. The ARV, so remember, you need to know three numbers when you analyze a property, the after repair value. So when we repair the, val the property, we put in about, I would say 25,000. The property will be worth 166,000. Therefore, the, the most we should pay for this property, this is so critical, friends. If you want to do a flip, you need to expect to make at least a 20% return. What it means is if you sell the property for, let's say, 165, 20% of that is 13,000. So if you're not hitting that number, you shouldn't even do the flip. But in order for that to happen, you would need to buy the property for no more than Look at this, 93,000. Uh, if you were to keep it for a rental, 108. So the, pro the property is obviously overpriced for the amount of work that it requires, okay? So th in this case, we're gonna skip this property all together. But that's what I wanted to show you because when you look at exactly the same property in the MLS, the problem when you look at the property in the MLS is that you have no clue um, how much this property will sell for once you've done all the repairs. And that is so critical. So you would need to get a, a hire a broker to do uh, a CMA, com Comparative Market Analysis, for you to know that this property could be worth 166000 okay? Um, and then I'm gonna give you another rule of thumb. When it comes down to <clears throat> scoping the work, I'm gonna give you this rule of thumb. Multiply the square footage times $20, and that's gonna be a rough estimate for your rehab. So 1,200 square feet, multiply that times two, it's gonna be 24,000, okay? So give and take, um, assuming, the assumption is that the property is in a bread and butter area. So it's not gonna be in a very expensive or, an, or, or in a very depressed area. So it's gonna be in a middle income area, which all is, and that you just need to do a light to medium rehab. Those are the two key assumptions that you can, um, that if you have in this particular case, you can use the rule of thumb of multiplying the square footage times two just to give you an idea of how much it's gonna take you to, to rehab the property, okay? Um, so obviously this is a no deal. When you're looking at properties and analyzing properties, you shouldn't take more than 30 seconds to analyze a property. So the first thing that you need to do when looking at a property in the MLS, right here, location, right? Location is number one. So you want to make sure that you stay away from busy streets, rivers, um, or floodplains, uh, airports, train tracks, 
something that is noisy, right? Highway. So in this case, this doesn't seem to be in a busy street. Uh, I, I love to just toggle back and forth between the map view and the street view. Okay, so the street looks very, very decent. Okay, um, so it's not a busy street. Okay, so this is all very cool. Uh, now let's look at the numbers. So this is the subject property right here, the one that we're facing. Uh, so the property is listed for 133, ARV is 167, and then uh, the most we should offer 98, 115. So again, this property is overpriced. It just got listed. It's been listed for about a week. Uh, let's look at the pictures, okay? So definitely it needs some updating, but it, it's not extensive, okay? I would consider this a light to medium rehab. Just based on the pictures, you need some flooring, uh, you need updates in the kitchen, in the bathrooms, for sure, the appliances, countertop. Uh, but obviously you need to see the property from the inside. But at this point, um, this property has been new on the market for about a week. So they're asking 133. You really need to get this property. Um, if you want to do a rental, the most you should pay is 115,000. That is with the assumption that you're going to need to put in at least um, 15 to 25,000 in the property. Obviously you need to see the property from the inside. But let me tell you, once you open up a house, you're going to be spending at least no less than 15,000, okay? Between painting, um, flooring, life fixtures, all cosmetic work, you're looking at at least 15,000. But in this particular case, given the square footage, the size of the property, um, and if it's still light to medium rehab, you can go up as high as 25 easily. Um, now, keep in mind that if you need to touch or you need to do a new roof, Every time that you redo a new system like electric, plumbing, roof, windows, you're going to be adding about 10,000, 10 to 12,000 for every system that you touch when you, when you redo that system uh, from scratch. So you need to be aware of that. Um, and then in this case, <clears throat> I want to give you a secret. Um, if you want to move forward, because you're going to be making money in real estate when you talk to listing agents, talk to owners, or make offers. That's the only three activities in real estate that are going to make you money. Anything else that you do is overhead. It's not going to make you a single penny, okay? I just want to make sure that that is very clear. So the next step is what I like to do is once I see the property, in this case that is new, it needs a little bit of work, not work. Um, not much work. I want to find out where, um, what the expectations from the seller are. Okay, so the first thing that I like to do is call the listing agent. So we're giving you the listing agent's contact information. Okay, and obviously you can read the description very quickly. Um, kitchen and bath, and then and a handyman. Okay, steer garage. So there are some minor issues. Uh, let me see that need to be addressed. And then something that they made very clear right here in capital letters, need to view the property before you submit offers. That is very critical. So the next step is obviously if you're interested in the property, uh, number one, make a phone call before you schedule an appointment to the listing agent. In this case, Susan. Because what you want to find out is uh, what is it that they're looking for, okay? So let me look at the agent remarks very quickly. Um, so pretty much is as is, no repairs. So what you see is what you get. Taxes are prorated at 100%. Then, um, okay, so pretty much the buyer is responsible for everything, okay? All the repairs, everything. So definitely the next step is to look at the property. Now, if you are a real estate broker, uh, obviously you can go to the MLS and then at the bottom, you can use show assist to schedule a showing. So the way to schedule the showing is very simple. Um, 
So here, schedule a single showing, and then boom, guys, the property is empty. So here they give you the lockbox. Showings are being tracked, missing keys, and the lockboxes will cause to report. Okay, so if you are not a real estate broker, the next thing that you need to know is, and this is gonna be in your favor, reach out to the listing agent and then ask, in this case, Susan, if she would consider dual agency. What that means is that she would also represent you in the transaction. She's obviously representing the seller, but most cases they'll be happy to represent you in the transaction as the buyer. Why? Because she's going to be making double the commission. Okay. She doesn't need to split the commission with a buyer's agent. Does that make sense? So they're going to be very motivated to make the deal work for you. And in your favor, sometimes when you work with the listing agent. Okay. So that's going to, that's just a, a tip of advice that I recommend. At this point, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give her a call uh, because I wanna see, you wanna know how much confidential information they can disclose to you. Obviously, uh, if they're ethical agents, they're gonna keep everything confidential. But what I wanna know is where do we need to be to make this work okay so they listed the property for uh, 133 but i know the numbers are not going to work obviously for a flip if we want to do a rental the most we can pay is 115 so i just want to find out test the waters how much um, her client is willing to sell the property for now keep in mind that she just listed the, the property about a week ago so they might need more time, more showings before they can, uh, you know, really come down on the price, but it, it doesn't hurt to, to, to try, right? So I'm gonna give her a call right now. Um, I'm gonna put you on the speakerphone so that you can all hear what's happening. So it's 708-907-5135. So it's gonna be very casual. I'm gonna put her on the speakerphone, Verizon hopefully. Wireless. Your call can now be complete. Uh, you can all hear 708-907-5133, okay? So I'm calling her right now. You've reached Susan Fiddler's office at City Suburban Real Estate. Please leave a message. Normal. Okay, so the first number went straight to voicemail. I'm gonna try the second number uh, because I really want to talk to her, 576. Eight 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 five. Okay, let's try this. So the phone is ringing. She's not picking up the phone, but I'm gonna leave a message. Um, we're gonna call back a little bit later, but this is what I would say. Hey, hello, Susan. My name is Hugo from Home First Realty. I'm looking at your listing in all at 11726 South Lemon, and I would like to know um, we're interested in buying a few properties in all SIP, and I need I would like to know where we need to be to make this work. Uh, we would like to make an offer today. Um, but I want to make a fair offer and I would like to know your client's expectations. So very simple, friends. You just want to find out as much information as possible as to how much they're willing to sell the property for. Because remember, this property is as is, okay? So now let's look at another property. Uh, now, something that is important, friends, uh, these, the last two properties we were looking at these are three bathrooms, one and a half bath, one bath. These properties are gonna be more marketable than a two bedroom. So this is a two bedroom. Now also the exterior brick over siding makes a big difference, okay? People love uh, brick, three bedroom, 
uh, would be ideal. Three, two, three bedroom, two baths would be very marketable. Rents would be better, higher. You would flip it quicker. Uh, so if you have the option to pursue a three bedroom, do so all day long versus a two bedroom. Uh, and as you can see, this is a two bedroom, one bath, and the price is 134, okay? So it just doesn't make sense. This is another three bedroom, one bath, okay? This is for 139. Let's quickly take a look at it. So the way you need to analyze properties is, first of all, location, location, location. I'm gonna zoom in, making sure this is not on a busy street, which is not. I'm gonna toggle back um, to the street view okay as you can see here uh it's very close to uh commercial uh zoning right here this huge building so the property if i zoom in yeah so techtopia okay there are a lot of uh, big buildings right behind the property okay if it's a rental it won't make much of a difference but keep in mind that if you want to flip it many people um, are not so comfortable being close to commercial uh, strip malls strip uh, stores and also uh, busy streets right right here but if it's a rental you know there's more leeway in there but let's just quickly look at the numbers so location is just okay uh, asking price 139 it's been on the market 78 days two months ARV uh, about 170 repairs, you know, between 20 to 30. Uh, let's quickly take a look at the inside. Um, it just needs, again, paint, flooring for sure. Um, it doesn't need much work, in fact, just very light. I would say 15,000 15, on this property. Um, so in this case, the most we could offer should be 105 for the flip, 124 for the rental. Uh, but if we're gonna make the rehab 15,000, let's say, instead of 21,000, so we can add 5,000 back into the offer amount. So for a flip, the most you should pay should be 110, and then for a rental, uh, 129. So still, you when you make an offer, you really need to make an offer for a lot less than the asking price. So let's assume that, let's just stick to this number. We need to pay no more than 125, so the most you should offer the first time should be about uh, 119, 120, okay? So that you have some room for negotiation, but keep in mind, the most you can pay is 125, assuming you're gonna buy and hold the property. Um, that's simple. So the question is, will they come down 15,000? I don't know, it, it is hard, right? But at least you can make an offer, right? But before you make an offer, remember, we need to uh, obviously read the description and then uh, call the listing agent. So it says property sold as sees not short sale or foreclosure. So it's just what you see is what you get. Obviously you have to see the property from the inside um, and uh, make an appointment. So again, just call the listing agent and say, you know, I'm interested in the property. I would like to know where we need to be. So in fact, um, I'm gonna make a quick phone call to this listing agent, Daniel, and see oh in fact i remember we called this agent if i'm not mistaken last night um so her client if i'm not mistaken the the, the minimum she's gonna be she's gonna take is 125 thousand for this property so it is right in the ballpark okay so I spoke with Daniel yesterday at the live event and the, the, the list they're gonna be willing to take is 125. So if the property, once we see the property from the inside, because uh, one thing is to look at the pictures and another thing is to actually see the property from the inside. So you must see the property from the inside uh, just to make sure that you know, the rehab is light to medium and you don't have any surprises because you need to look at 
high ticket items that are not shown in the pictures. What are the high ticket items? Um, electric, plumbing, HVAC, you know, the furnace, water heater, AC, the roof, okay? Dog pointing, all the outside, any foundation issues, cracks, um, mold, and so, so that's something very, very important that, that you need to, to look at when you walk a property. So in this case, if we wanted to make an offer, it's going to be very simple. Let me demo that. It says make offer. So we know that the most we should pay is 125, but we're going to make an offer for 120. We close next month, earn this money 1,000 and ASIS. Now down below, uh, this is where we pre-fill the information with your broker, with your loan officer, and with your attorney. Okay, so when we click on submit offer, what's going to happen is that we will instantly generate the send zero contract. Okay, and this is going to be in your local hard drive, and it will also get emailed to your broker not to the listing agent, okay? To your broker. So your broker can help you negotiate the deal, but at least you know the numbers. Um, and remember, you need to see the property from the inside. And many brokers don't like when you submit offers without having seen the property. And it makes sense, right? Um, so you wanna build good rapport with listing agents because uh, if you have that great relationship with them, they can disclose confidential information. They can pretty much make the deal happen for you. So make sure that you are in good terms with them and uh, see the property before making an offer. That is very, very important. So at this point, you know, we scroll down uh, the last page. These will have all your uh, information including like line 520 your signature is going to have your broker's information uh, attorney we're using our preferred attorney Gary Davidson uh, Chicago funding in this case while well, this has our brokerage otherwise uh, Frank Montreux is our preferred uh, broker and she is the listing agent okay very very simple so if you're working let's say with Frank uh, he would get an email with these offer as an attachment okay he can help you negotiate the deal on your behalf he can also show you the property uh, so it is that simple friends what i wanted to show you is that mls is just like the ocean you're swimming in the middle of the ocean you have no clue as to the arv unless you do a cma you don't know how much the rehab is going to be nor do you know how much you need to pay for the property. So it is very, very risky. Even if you have access to the MLS, if you don't know your numbers, like the back of your hand, you can lose a lot of money because real estate is a numbers business, okay? You need to know these basic numbers. ARV, uh, rehab, and also the maxed offer, okay? That is very critical. Uh, are there any questions on the line? And then something that we have is in uh, under the settings, go to deal alerts, okay? In here, you can specify as many areas uh, as you want, and then we're gonna be finding MLS deals that are gonna be shown under my deal alerts, okay? So you can, show as many cities as you're interested in, and then we're gonna be hitting the MLS on a daily basis. So we're gonna be sending you alerts for properties that uh, you know could potentially be a good deal, okay? So for instance, let me just show you this one. This property is listed for 280. Uh, the ARV is 311, so there's not much room for that, but obviously it depends on the condition of the property. But when they put just one picture, it's not a good sign. <laughs> it can potentially mean that it needs a lot of work. Uh, but here in my deal alerts, we're gonna be putting all the uh, properties that can potentially make sense, but still you need to do your 
due diligence, look at the property, uh, run the numbers. That is going to be very, very critical um, so that you never overpay for a property. You need to get a good deal. Uh, so make sure that you set up your deal alerts on their uh, settings and then deal alerts. All you need to do is pick the cities and uh, the max that you're willing to pay for the property. In this case, two, three hundred uh, thousand. That was my limit, which it's kind of high because we like to purchase properties under 150,000. Okay, that is a sweet spot. No more than 160,000. Uh, and the ARV should be 250. If you pay 150, it should appraise for 250 uh, once you've done all the work. And ideally, it's light to medium. Okay, you need to have a spread of about 100,000 um, without the rehab. And with the rehab, you need a spread of about 50 to 75,000. Okay, for the numbers to make sense. That is so critical. Okay, are there any questions on the line? Okay, let me see. Um, what are the private listings that are located in the search? Uh, private network. Uh, I'm not sure what we mean by private listings. Another question is, um, oh, okay, the spread. So the spread should be about 100,000, okay? Well, so let's say you get the property and the contract for 150. Once you've done the work, assuming that the light, the rehab is going to be light to medium, you're going to be putting 20 to 30,000. Then the property should appraise for 250. So you bought it for 150 plus, let's say 30,000, all in 180. It should appraise for 250. So you have at least a 70,000 spread. Okay. Uh, so you have enough equity pretty much to have very little money stuck in the property. You can do a successful flip. Um, just the rule of thumb is you need 25% equity on the property, okay? So that you can refinance, you can have very little money stuck in it and that the numbers make sense if you decide to rent the property or flip it, okay? Make a 20% return. So the spread should be, 75,000 to 100,000, okay? Very, very important. Uh, are there any other questions? Okay, uh, so if no further questions, I wanna make sure that everyone has access to Chicago Deal Vault, okay? So if you don't have access to Deal Vault, um, you know, we're gonna give it to you for free for the next 30 days. After that, uh, the retail price is 190, but we lock you in at the promotional rate of 140, okay? Um, and also before I show you um, how to sign up, I'm gonna send you the link. Um, for the registration, how you can get free access to Chicago Deal Vault. So, and then I'm gonna give you a promo code. Okay, this is a form. If you don't have access to Chicago Deal Vault, I wanna make sure that you all have access. That is the form. And then make sure that in the select package, uh, in the package drop down, I'm gonna write it here package, you select. Special Chicago Deal Vault. Okay, and the promo code is MLS. Okay, this will give you a 30 day free trial. Okay, and then afterwards it will be 140 per month. And you can cancel anytime. Um, now we have the yearly membership. Uh, the price has went up this week. So the yearly, if you decide to stay yearly, you're going to be seeing a 15%. So the yearly membership is 1540, okay? Or it's equivalent to about 120 per month. Now the difference is that when you do the yearly, we're going to assign a decade 
VA, virtual assistant. So the VA is going to be finding deals on your behalf. Whether you have time to uh, log into the system or not, we are going to assign somebody to find you off-market deals, okay? We're going to be focusing on off-market deals. In Chicago, uh, that's our strength. So we're going to be focusing on uh, probates, pre-foreclosures, upcoming auctions, all these properties that are technically not for sale. Um, okay, so th those are the off-market properties. That's where the big profit spreads are. Uh, there's another question whether or not we lock the property in Elmwood Park. Yeah, yeah, we, we locked that in. So we have it on the contract for um, 150000 okay? And that property is worth about two sixty. So that's, again, the spreadsheet that I was talking about. So we're going to go over that property on Sunday. I'm going to send you this workshop that we're holding on Sunday at 1 p.m. in uh, Double Tree Oakbrook. So I want to make sure that all of you come to this awesome event. We're going to give you the secrets, the blueprints on how you can have access to incredible off-market deals, banked on properties. Not only that, but you have zero competitions. You, you can fund the deals and most importantly, um, you can recycle the money. So we're going to be talking about funding, how you can fund these deals with very little money down. So make sure that you come to this event. Um, that's going to be very, very critical. Um, now, there's another question uh, here. Uh, what about using MLS for wholesaling deals? Can you do an example, please? Of course. Um, in fact, we just did, it's called, I'm going to put it in the chat. Um, so somebody asked, can you use the MLS to wholesale? Yes, and that's called whole. Instead of wholesale, you call this, I'm typing this whole. Tailing. Okay, so when you buy a property, you need to close on the property and then you can resell it. Um, and in fact, we have one. Um, let me let me get the address. Give me just a second and I'm going to give you an example. Okay. So I'm going to give you an example of this. So I'm going to do a search in the MLS uh, right here. 2725 West Iowa. Okay, so this is an example of a property um, that we bought off market for 110,000 and we put it back on the MLS. We didn't do anything to it. Okay, so pretty much we just cleaned, cleaned that up. Um, we spent about 3000 in cleanup and it closed in three days. So we bought it for 110, we sold it for 198. You know, after closing cost expenses, uh, the net profit was about 70, 70,000. So we just did that uh, about, um, about a week ago or so. So that's called whole tailing. So we Purchase the property, we do nothing to it, and you put it back on the MLS. So that's called wholetailing. It's not called wholesaling. Wholesaling means that you have a property in the contract and then you sell or assign the rights of the contract to somebody else. Okay. This is called wholetailing, what I'm showing you right now. Using the MLS to sort of wholesale the property. It's called wholetailing. That's what we did on this property last week. So Obviously, uh, you know, the, the, it's, um, it was just amazing, right? Um, doing this before you think about doing a flip. But I mean, after ARV in this property, in this neighborhood, 
is if they do a credit rehab on this, it could be over 300,000. Okay, because it's just prime location. This is located in Ukrainian village. Okay. Uh, okay, another question is in, in deal vault, the wholesale is, uh, amount is not readable. Okay, this wholesale amount. So make sure that you, you change your resolution. So if I make the numbers really big, you might cut off some of the numbers. So you can change your resolution on your screen for that. 